We were thinking about what video we should do today, and it got me thinking. This is the flight test rug where we sweep all of our dirty <laughs> little secrets underneath it. Uh, at the old shop, we had the boneyard. This is our new one. After the last video, you probably assumed that the B-52 legacy was over. <laughs> Luckily, me and my boy Maddie, the last remaining piece of the B-52. <laughs> She's definitely seen better days. The nose is gone, we used it on the thing. The wing, uh, the wing was not repairable, but we did salvage all the electronics. I'm looking at this here and I'm thinking, this is a, this is a great project right here, especially for me. Specifically, the tail section. I think I have a couple ideas. We're gonna make this fly. So here's what I'm thinking, like this is the great, I mean this is great, look at this. The servos, everything's still perfectly intact, the rigidity's still there. I have to say, I was skeptical of the structural rigidity and I was absolutely proven wrong. It was built to last. And uh, even after we crashed the wing, ah! <laughs> it still was pretty strong, believe it or not. Here's what we're gonna do, I'm thinking from here over, not really necessary. This is, this, is the, this is the part that I'm interested in. So what I got here is my standard issue flight test tool of choice. Yep, I caught one. <laughs> caught one of the servo leads. I thought I felt something in there. Oh yeah, dude. So here's what I'm thinking. This is obviously not an airplane. This is the tail of an airplane. But what I'm gonna do is turn it into an airplane. <laughs> So we made the B-52, then we took the wings off and made that into what I call the B-26. This is gonna be the B-13 mini bomber. <laughs> I'm more and more excited about it. What I'm envisioning in my head is like if a B-52 had a baby. <laughs> this is what it would look like, like 10 of them. What we're gonna need is definitely like a B-52 looking cockpit up here for the captain and commander up there. The tricky thing is going to be figuring out a power system. I'm thinking realistically we might be better off with a prop system. So either a tractor, something that pulls it, so a motor on the front, or we could do a twin engine with two nacelles um, or a pusher, you never know. So I'm gonna get started first by doing the nose section because I think that's really gonna bring it to life. But I think this is gonna be great. So it's gonna fly off of Elevons. And then just for funsies, uh, typically flying wings don't need a rudder. I'm gonna leave this big old rudder on there because I think it's gonna be funny and I'll be flying nice and true and then just give it full rudder and just see what it does. All right, so I'm gonna get some foam. I'm gonna start freehanding a cockpit canopy. Let's do it. All right, so before we get any further in this build, I gotta get some lunch. And while I'm doing that, I figured we'd also talk about our sponsor for this video, and that is our friends over at HelloFresh. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with HelloFresh, HelloFresh is the number one meal kit in America. <laughs> With HelloFresh, you get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. So you don't have to fuss around at the grocery store and all you have to do is cook it and enjoy it. Pretty simple, right? HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. I'm a noob and I made some really good pork, honey glazed pork that is, and it was a blast. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something delicious every time. So, like I said earlier, me and my wife, we cooked the honey-glazed pork, and I have to say that the food was amazing, but I actually enjoyed the experience just as much, if not more, than the actual food itself. Cooking in the kitchen and really feeling like you know what you're doing uh, was something I've never experienced before because I never know what I'm doing in a kitchen. The cool thing about it is it comes with very detailed instructions that have images. It's not only very, very clear, but it's very well thought out and designed so you can cook the food very effectively and efficiently. So for example with my meal they had you start out by prepping by chopping the potatoes and then you get them prepped on the thing and then you put those into the oven and then while those potatoes are cooking in the oven you get the pan going with the pork on it and it's just this is very well thought out of how they always keep you busy and in about a half hour's time I had an awesome meal on the table. It was a really cool experience and it made everybody in the family very very happy because the pork was very delicious and we had a blast making it. So and here's the cool thing 
You can get started with eight free meals. That's $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the promo code FLIGHTTEST80. Again, that's promo code FLIGHTTEST80. It's here on the screen. It's also in the description. HelloFresh is now from $6.99 per serving, which is pretty crazy because if you were to go to a restaurant and get the same quality food, it'd be much, much more expensive than that. The other cool thing is you can easily change the delivery days or food preferences. So you can skip a day whenever you want. So if you're a normal human being and you like really good food, I really encourage you to check this out. It is a really cool way to go about getting your meals and also having a great experience in the kitchen and eating some awesome food. By clicking the link in our description, you are helping us out a ton and it's because of awesome people like you out there and our awesome sponsors like HelloFresh that Flightest is able to do what we do making these crazy projects. So again, thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and uh, forget building this plane. I'm gonna go make some food and eat lunch. <laughs> I recruited some help. I got my buddy Jeremy here, who is the master of freehanding and molding foam together to make some unique shapes. So he's helping me with the nose. But as we were building, I couldn't help but realize, I think I understand maybe where some of my inspiration for this project came from, and that is the 1950s. Now, a lot of you probably know that the 1950s was like the wild west of aviation. Right after World War II, it seems like human beings have kind of like figured out aerodynamics and how to make them go and jet engines were a thing. And so the 50s and 60s, they did all kinds of crazy projects to stuff like what reminds me of this, like the Ryan X-13 VertiJet. Now, if you guys haven't seen that, this thing is ridiculous looking and it actually looks a lot like what I'm envisioning for this. It was basically a contracted project by a company named Ryan to experiment with a vertical jet takeoff and landing platform. It looked super sketchy. We're not gonna be doing uh, vertical takeoff and landings with this, but it does give me some hope because it says that there is maybe something out there with a tail this big and wings this small that actually had some level of success in flight. We're getting the nose. It's basically gonna be a simple shaped cone nose. And then I wanna put like a fighter jet cockpit on the, on the top. I was considering doing like the B-52 traditional kind of uh, cockpit cluster, but I think a fighter jet would be more appropriate. All right, so it's clear I hired the right help here. Jeremy is the master of quick and dirty foam molding. I mean, that looks beautiful. It's huge. Dude. Coming at you. It looks ridiculous on the wide angle lens. Dude, it looks, it looks legit. Yeah. It looks like something straight out of the 1950s. This was a great idea, dude. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna sell this as a kit. <laughs> so my concerns, are wing surface area and no stability. I do think the canard would give us more stability, but it wouldn't look as cool. And I don't know where this would technically balance. It's a flying wing, right? It's so a flying wing. Flying wing. wings balance about like a And they third. need to be nose heavy. Yeah, which we can do. Basically, we can move the battery anywhere we want in there to adjust the CG to make it fly. We're gonna be using a Power Pack C straight off of like a, one of our A10 kits. I, that just blew my mind. Look at the size of these control surfaces. And if we make this thing a twin, it's gonna be blowing the thrust right over the control oh, surfaces. Yes. So hopefully, it's gonna give us extreme maneuverability in general if we can get it flying. And then who knows, it might be able to do some aerobatics, maybe even like high alpha and hover it. Or it might not even fly at all. It might not even fly at all. This is getting exciting because we're nearing the final stretch before the maiden flight. Alex is putting motor pods together to put our two CPAC motors on. After that, he's got to do all the wiring, which includes re-soldering one of the servo leads that he cut through. And then finally, we just got to paint it up and make it look sweet, or at least make it look all gray. The little guy is done and I couldn't be more proud. I <laughs> couldn't be more of a proud dad. It looks great. I'm happy to see that the B-52 is gonna take to the sky again. So in the last video, in the B-52 video, we talked about how there was a B-52 that flew without a tail, and now here's a tail of a B-52 that flew without a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if this works, I think the B-52 might be the best airplane design of all time uh, because you can take any portion of it and uh, make it fly at any time. So concerns, I got a couple of them as per usual. I went with no landing gear. I was considering putting uh, Ben's awesome B-52 cantilever gear on there, but it was a little bit heavy. And so I'm going with the old belly slider. This this runway we got, it's like a big old slip and slide. And my only concern is that the tail section sticks way out the back. And so for an aircraft to take off, you need to have a nice rotation point. And typically that happens around the area of the CG or the center of gravity. And this is just a flat bottom. I hope that it's gonna be able to rotate and get off the ground. The thing that we do have going for it, the wing is kind of sitting at an upward angle of attack like that. So that should help. My hope is that it'll just lift off the ground 
ground without needing to rotate too much. So that's pretty much it. We got differential, we got elevons, we got everything we need for success. Running off of a uh, Lumineer 4 cell 2250 in our power pack seat. What's your prediction, Matt? I, I'm very positive. I like to stay positive. Not too many negative comments come out of me. And the one thing I am concerned about is that giant rudder. It's just huge. It looks like it's the full plane. I think it's gonna possibly fly. Well, no, this is recycling at its finest. I don't think there's ever been a plane that's been recycled so beautifully from front to back, left to right. It's, it's incredible. The funny thing with the fin, it's not gonna act as a rudder, which is gonna give you yaw control. It's most likely gonna give you aileron control. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what that's like because there's just, there's no wing. It's it's just gonna give you a force to the left or the right. So if it gets off the ground, it's gonna be pretty awesome. I can't even think right now because I don't really even know what's gonna happen because it literally like defies everything that you think about with an airplane. I have a gut feeling that Alex has done his homework and that it's gonna fly tried and true. Oh my gosh, up, that's up. the nicest thing you've ever said about it. I know. Me. I give it a 95.5% chance of success. Thanks, bro. Let's go, baby well, boo. Now that he said that, I was probably gonna crash. <laughs> All right, so while Alex is getting ready to fly this plane here, we noticed that a lot of you guys are watching the content. Big thanks, by the way, but a lot of you are not subscribed. Do us a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so we can put out more content and make sure you get to see it. All right, I'm good. You guys good? Yes. All right. Good. We got a little crosswind now. It always happens. It was going right down the road. It was. It was right, right down the road earlier. Wait. Okay. <laughs> here goes nothing. Transfer the shake from the thumbs down to the knees. You here ready? we go. Here we go. Come on, baby. Oh, oh, he's coming at us. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. That, a crosswind, I got a huge rudder, so <laughs> All right, here ready, we go. Boy, let's go. Here we go. Oh, oh man. Let me launch you. Hand launch. Hand no, launch? Let me try here. <laughs> Handle's pretty good on the ground. Uh, let me try a couple more times here. Okay. I'd prefer to do a t runway takeoff just because the stakes are lower. And if it fails, we can ass assess and then rebuild. <laughs> Durable. Sick. It's a sick vehicle, though. <laughs> just, just using that rudder to whip it around. Did I lose a prop? I think uh, maybe yeah, a Yeah, you got a windmiller. A yeah, windmiller. <laughs> prop All right, let's go recess. Let's go check it out. All right, so Josh, you're thinking it might be a little tail heavy? If you grab it here, see how it's like, oh, it balances here. Yeah. So if you take it to the same spots, yeah. down, down closer to the CG, so. I think your CG idea is in the right spot. If you're getting um, the moment, the, the fulcrum, the pendulum thing. Fulcrum yeah. thing. Yep, so. that, that thing. The little pendulum fulcrum thing. <laughs> yeah. And then that was causing it to, to spin out like that, you think? Yeah, even on a lot of uh, a lot of typical planes, if it's tail heavy, the ground handling is just terrible. Yeah, just shove that sucker all in the nose. You want to see where it bounces out? Yeah. I think it's better, dude. I, I think I brought the duct tape out. Oh, cool. <gasps> Alrighty, take two, a little bit more nose weight. I'm going with differential thrust on, on my yaw axis. All right, and All three, right, two, one. Here we Here go. Here we go, come on, baby. Go, go. Get her in the air! Oh. I think it's what I was talking about, about not being able to rotate. You want to give it a toss? Yeah. Let's toss it, dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> Look at Josh run. Yeah, oh, that's the, that's the thumbnail oh, right no. there. Michael Jordan. Now, when I, you let go of it, you run. I'm going to get in there. All right, thanks, man. I love you. <laughs> Hope it works. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yes! Yes! Yeah! She looks like, oh, oh, she looks like she flies terrible. <laughs> what do you feel right now, dude? I'm, just, I'm just trying to climb. Okay. It looks ridiculous. Oh my gosh. You got her? Oh. That's right, Lynn in the tree. Trees are soft. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Maddie, how you feel up there? Dude, I, I'm trying to keep up with them. It's, it's a just ballistic a, It's a squirrely squirrel up there, I think, I think the, the model you're, or the plane you're referring to is pretty bad too, so. <laughs> is it, does it like high alpha? He has it, he has it. Oh, oh, e easy, easy. Oh, oh my I thought you were going to die, Bob, dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't talk right now. I'm in total concentration. <laughs> total concentration. So it's flying, but it's doing this, like, weeble wobble effect. And it, at times, it looks like he's going to annihilate the bird into the ground. I'm just trying to trim it. it. Yeah, there's. I, I feel like the geometry might be a little off with <laughs> you gotta, something. 
you've got a rudder that's giving you aileron input ahead of your <laughs> elevon. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably not cool. But easy. I bet you more knows what will fix it a little bit. Alright, I think she's dead. Bring her in for a landing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she lives, man. She lives, yeah. Dude, you crashed that, that was man. Good. Yeah, I'll take it. I don't know if it was maybe like the thrust angle was off on one of the motors or the rudder was off. Because it felt like like this stability was good, but it was just like kind of wanting to like drift. So I I trimmed it in full left rudder. <laughs> So that was un <laughs> unbelievable. I cannot believe it. The B-52 flies again. But special shout out to all you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. Ben Harbor, everybody in the Flight Test community, everybody who helped build the B-52 at Flight Fest, thank you guys so much. We appreciate y'all being here. And until the next one, see ya. I have a gut feeling that Alex has done his homework and that it's going to fly tried and true. Oh my gosh, uh, that's uh, the nicest thing you've ever said about it. I know. Me.